How was it? Did it meet your expectations? Did you have any? Um, I'm not sure what expectations I had, um, but I've been talking about the conference with other people and we were quite surprised about how unique it was. And if we had the conference on humanitarianism somewhere else, it might be quite political, science-y or policy-related, but it was really quite a special conference to have here at the KWI and, and run by the centre with a mixture of like cultural theory, historians, lawyers, philosophers, international relations. And it was, I thought it was very nicely done the way the different panels worked on the whole variety of positions because nothing, nothing was really taken for granted, even what humanitarianism was, let alone how we might be doing it or what the problems were with it. We set up this uh, Centre for Global Cooperation as a so-called Kete Hamburger colleague. From 10 to 8 is too long, so I expanded my break. I was missing a little bit the internationality perspective in terms of that we have people from Africa, Asia, Arab world represented here on the panels. So if that would be, I'm not saying that this is, uh, I think it's highly professional, but I think it could be even be more um, stimulating for the discussion if we have also other inputs for other cultural points of view. I think it's a very Western liberal discourse about um, an ethical universalism or, or for some people a more technical way of going out and doing things. So, you know, I think that might be part of it as well. But I, I agree with you that it's, it would have been better to have a broader balance, you know, in terms of ideas, theories, etc. as well. But you can't complain. It was a bit German. I think it's absolutely terrific, um, especially because there's a number of people here from different disciplines. So you have people, so you have philosophers, you have practitioners, you have people that are talking about similar themes, but from really different vantage points. And I think it's le leading to a really interesting discussion, a really rich discussion. What seems to be a dichotomy or kind of gulf between what we call Western universalism and then the specificity of uh, local context. And I wonder whether we can still meaningfully uh, ponder that distinction within the paradigm that we have available at the moment. It seems to be so uh, much laden by uh, uh, I don't know, early 20th century, maybe early post-World War II perception of West and Western values as hegemonic values. And I understand what, that with the globalization, this perception has been reinforced. This uh, conference in particular is extraordinary. It's uh, some of the most senior scholars, but a lot of young people. And the senior scholars have so much respect for a lot of new ideas, and that's pretty rare. Um, a lot of times senior scholars can sort of jealously guard their old ideas. Um, but there's a lot of mutual respect and um, excitement where young people feel um, that their uh, experimental ideas are, uh, are respected. The good thing about the conference was that we lost something. We lost a certain clarity about what humanitarianism was. And I'm not sure whether that's because of the interdisciplinary nature of it or because of at the moment where we are in 2014, where we've sort of gone beyond a whole variety of debates around humanitarianism. And I think the whole moral drive to go out and do good has been so problematized. And I think, that's, I think that the broader world has um, problematized humanitarianism. Interesting was um, the focus on really cultures of cooperation because we have attended different conferences on humanitarian action, on international cooperation, on new actors, but not from the uh, cultural side, like having more theory uh, in mind and, and, and dealing with also anthropological um, uh, approaches to, to the question of, of cooperation dialogue. So I thought that is a uh, a value uh, addition to ongoing research here. Yeah. I think there's one principal argument and uh, the argument is that uh, we had a large number of uh, very interesting and in themselves rewarding case studies but what about the theoretical framework into which they fit? Um, this is something which uh, I've missed so far perhaps uh, we get this this evening. One thing that I detected I think was that for an older generation, the question was how to make humanitarianism more universal, how to make it more sort of 
politically and how to make it more politically functional, how to do things more with humanitarianism. Whereas for a younger generation, I, th I was thinking that they were quite critical of that idea of a universal understanding of learning lessons and doing more. I find it important to have this dialogue between the different approaches, perspectives and methods, so um, that is really interesting, but um, I don't think we can draw any conclusions so far. We're talking about objective man yeah, yeah. and whether he can do empathy or not. Exactly. Says, objective man in Nietzsche is ultimately not about empathy. This is about the most radical openness that there can be. Yeah. It's a fantastic ability, but it does not include human empathy. No, and there's no subject that intervenes in the world with causes and goals and aspirations. The objective man has no ends. The objective man is just there in the world. Are you satisfied with the discussion on, on about Nietzsche? Yeah, I find the discussion interesting, yeah. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I find the talk interesting, I find the discussion interesting, yeah. I think that, one, that was a nice talk. And uh, you appreciated this statement on curiosity? Yeah. I appreciate but it. But it made you curious? Not really that it made me curious, it just made me feel that I was right <laughs> about thinking along similar lines. Not really curious. But I, I, I think it was a nice talk.